seen this before so well we it feels very authentic some fire for you as well <laughs> well good afternoon everybody uh, it's great to be here and I think we're very lucky to have David uh, here the chief uh, strategy officer of Knip uh, a company that Route 66 Ventures invested in uh, probably about eight months ago um, well before we kind of dive in I, you know one question I always uh, like to ask startups that we're looking at investing in is first of all tell us what Knip does and specifically, what problem uh, does Knip solve in the marketplace? Got it, got it. Well, I guess um, actually anybody in the room who recently had to buy insurance uh, knows what the problem is. So just from a consumer point of view, uh, navigating the insurance jungle is really a hassle uh, because from a consumer point of view, the insurance industry is really perceived as not transparent. As, and as a customer, I really got a hard time finding out, well, it's actually the the coverage I get uh, from my agent or from a price comparison website is really the coverage I need or are there maybe some different interests in the play. And this is what KNIP um, or where KNIP actually starts. So KNIP is a digital personal alliance insurance broker uh, that provides our users a one by one overview of their existing insurance policies and in a second step they also have the opportunity to receive advice through our recommendation engine and last but not least also by our purely salaried staff of insurance brokers uh, and there they have the opportunity to receive advice via messenger, uh, email or phone if they wish to talk to a person over the phone of course. So in, in a few words, what, how, what would you say? Is digital insurance broker, is that yeah, customer centric digital insurance broker? Customer centric digital insurance broker, absolutely, yeah. And, and you know, looking at your bio, uh, what jumped out to me, uh, out to me was that you you originally from the banking industry. Yeah. So how does somebody go from the banking industry to the insurance industry? Uh, what, what's what's the catch there? Well, when I started out in the banking industry, uh, I actually joined the multi-channel management and digitization team of uh, of a Swiss bank. And uh, I mean, the impact digitization has had on the banking industry so far was tremendous. Uh, but when you look at the insurance industry, uh, and this ha actually happened back in August 2014 when I happened to meet uh, Christine and Dennis, the founders of Clip, I just realized that the insurance industry actually seems to be behind quite a bit compared to the banking industry. Because if you look at the established uh, insurance players, they're mostly product or agent centric driven. So they don't put the customer front and center of all their activities. And this is really what actually uh, was so compelling when I met Dennis and Christina because I really felt that they've got a wish to change the insurance industry for the better by putting the customer front and center of all their activities and by really adding value by being an independent and uh, transparent source of advice to the customer. And so they, uh, we as a company, of course, to reduce on a constant basis the, uh, the hurdle to interact with their insurance matters and when I heard about the concept back then, I was just like, wow, it's so amazing. I want to be part of this and I want to help them accomplish their vision. Interesting, interesting. So when I think about banking in, in fintech, mm -hmm. um, there's always this question on, you know, how do you interact with incumbents, right? Uh, these large financial institutions, uh, regulated entities that have been around for hundreds of years. You know, making the analogy kind of to insurance, kind of the same thing, right? And so what, what, is, what is KNIP's view on how you interact with the incumbent uh, carriers, brokers in the industry? I mean, I know a few months ago, uh, there was, there's a lot of ruckus about Hazan, uh, the insurance carrier, I think, in Switzerland, um, and kind of some uh, back and forth between KNIP and them and the media. Uh, are, are insurance carriers your friends? Are they your foes? I mean, how, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do you view them? I mean, uh, there have or actually there were quite a lot of discussions in the past uh, 
regarding CNIP's, uh, CNIP's uh, stance on the insurance industry and especially on the insurers, of course, so that created a lot of debates. Uh, our view uh, really is we view especially the insurers as partners because uh, we don't aim to, to replace an insurer, we don't aim to, uh, to, to change the way, uh, let's say, uh, the, the very heart of their business, but it's really about um, us viewing them as partners and hence also helping them to stay relevant in the digital age because I believe what the insurance industry, especially the insurers, struggle to understand a bit that what the InsurTech movement is about, and especially what CNIP also is about, that they cannot do it themselves. They cannot adopt the, the customer-centric uh, view in their processes and uh, services and products as fast as we do, and they simply cannot add the same value. And uh, I view it as a symbiosis, so I think we, we actually have plenty of room for partnerships there, and if we work together, if we really have discussions uh, on the relevant topics and, and levels, that uh, we can actually change the insurance industry together as a community for the better. Oh, that's great, that's great. Well, there's a lot of insurance carriers in the audience, so hopefully uh, <laughs> you can interact with them and, and partner. Um, so kind of going back to, kind of narrowing the focus, talked about kind of the carriers. Now let's go to the digital insurance brokers, uh, because there's, there's actually quite a few now, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Knips one, uh, you have Get Safe, mm -hmm. uh, you have Clark, uh, and there's a few other players even in the UK that are emerging. Um, what, what, what's the, where, is there any differentiation? Are, are you guys all the same? Uh, you know, how, how do you guys differentiate relative to the other players? Well, first of all, uh, I mean, it's really great to see that, uh, that there is competition around because whenever there is competition around, I guess one really knows, okay, the business model uh, and the product one has uh, really is worth it and is attractive and it just really helps the broader audience uh, and, and society to understand what the, what the added value is. Uh, in terms of differentiation, I believe the, the magic is not the front end but really the back end. Uh, I mean, we, um, especially since the Series B funding round, invested uh, a significant amount of money into automatization, into our own back end in order to increase our operational efficiency. And uh, this is something that one cannot accomplish uh, that fast. This needs time to build up. Uh, this needs lots of data to build up on that. And uh, last but not least, I believe we have uh, a very, very unique vision in terms of really putting the customer front and center. Mm, got it, got it. So you, you guys have been around for how many years now? Um, I mean, we officially launched back in January 2015, and previously we had, uh, we had a pilot of, uh, of four months. So um, this in September 2014 uh, was the first day that, uh, that the app was live in the app store. Okay. So obviously you guys have overcome you know, the inertia to actually get started. Mm -hmm. um, but as you guys look uh, forward, I mean, what, what are your guys', uh, what, what, are, what are the company's biggest challenges to, to tackle mm -hmm. um, in the coming years? I will, um, being completely honest about that, I guess this is uh, something that every startup experiences when it starts scaling. I mean, managing growth or complexity is a challenge uh, for itself. I mean, we right now have uh, over 100 uh, employees spread across three locations, and this adds a lot of complexity in terms of uh, the interfaces when you collaborate, but also in terms of collaborating uh, on a daily basis and making sure that you can also, on the one hand, really still lead the company that grew so quickly and establish all the structure you need in order to be able to lead and direct the day-to-day -day business, but still to be able to actually drive the vision and make sure that everybody understands the big picture and where we want to head to. Mm. Got it, got it. Um, and, and so, you know, obviously we're here for Startup Bootcamp Demo Day, um, and, and this is just a precursor to really the finale that we're about to see. Um, uh, you know, so we have 10 companies that are going to be coming up here and pitching. Uh, they're about to, to hit exit velocity. They're leaving this accelerator program. What words of advice uh, from where, you know, the path that you've traveled with Knip um, and your experience in a startup can you give uh, these companies um, as they leave the Startup Bootcamp Accelerator? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I guess on, uh, I mean, this is uh, kind of a, uh, a learning I had on a personal level, but I guess uh, being able to overcome frustration really is key in order to be able to, uh, to move on and succeed. 
And I mean, especially what does that mean in the insure tech context? It means that when you, change the, when you want to change an industry, especially in, in, in an industry that hasn't experienced change in quite some while, then eventually at some point in time you're going to face resistance. And resistance can lead to frustration. Uh, but being able to actually uh, overcome frustrations and to move on and to find workarounds and new solutions uh, is key, I guess. And uh, what my advice would be to, uh, yeah, to, to every founder and to everyone who, uh, who is part of, uh, of an intro tech startup. Interesting. And you think that's unique to insurance or, or broadly throughout startups? I mean, broadly throughout startups, but especially in the, insur in the insurance industry, I'd say. So, uh, I mean, those who are uh, part of the industry a bit longer, they can probably re relate to that and they know that uh, uh, it's not too underestimated at times. Great, great. Well, David, thank you uh, so much for, for this time and the conversation. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed it. And uh, now on to the grand finale. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ben.